Welcome to CCE 341, Random Processes. Our next topic is lecture number two, combinations and permutations, and the example we'll be using is five card stud. So the way five card stud works is you take a deck of cards and you shuffle them. That puts the cards in a random order. Then you start dealing them out. First card is face down so that I can see it, no one else can. Next card is face up. And I might start doing some betting. I think I've got a good hand, so I'm going to bet a yellow M&M. Once the betting is done, we'll deal another card. I've got a really good hand now. I'm going to bet an orange M&M. Once all the betting is done, we'll deal another card. Uh, still a pretty good hand, so I might bet two M&Ms. Again, the betting goes around. And then finally, you deal out the last card. Everybody places their bets. I'll now bet a yellow and a green M&M, &M, yellow and a blue. Once all the betting's done, we reveal our cards. I've got a pair of tens backed by an ace. Highest hand wins and gets all the M&Ms. So that's the idea. That's how five card stud works. What I'd like to do is go through the probability of drawing different hands in poker. That's combinations and permutations. Now a couple definitions to start with. Combinatorics is how many different ways an event can happen. To do that, I'll be using a couple of terms. There's n factorial. 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Permutations would be the number of events taken m at a time. Combinations is n events taken m at a time where the order doesn't matter. And combinations can also be written as n choose m. There's also sample with replacement, sample without replacement. With replacement is I draw a card, but I don't like it, I put it back in the deck and reshuffle it. Sample without replacement is if I have a card, I don't like it, I discard it. So with those, I'd like to know what's the probability of drawing different hands in five card stud. Uh, the winning hands in poker, by order, go royal flush, ten through ace of the same suit, straight flush, four of a kind, and so on. Now to start out, as recall, when you start the game, you shuffle the deck. I might want to know how many different ways you can shuffle the deck. Well, when I do that, the top card in the deck, this one right here, there's 52 possibilities for that card. The next card, there's 51 possibilities. Next card, 50. Next card, 49, and so on. So the number of different ways the deck can be shuffled is 52 times 51 times 50. That's 52 factorial. There's 8 times 10 to the 67th ways to shuffle the deck. This is where enumeration doesn't work. There's just too many combinations. Instead, we're going to be using a thing called permutations and combinations. Permutation is where order matters. For the way the hand plays out, order does matter. For example, if I had the first card revealed with an ace, I might bet other people could keep on betting. Second card reveals the second ace, people are going to start dropping out. A third card reveals another ace, uh, probably everyone's folded at this point, and I've got the pot, no one's going to keep on betting. That's one way the hand plays out. A second way the hand could play out, I could say, here's my face down card. First card revealed is an ace. And again, I could start betting, people probably stay in. Next card reveals the three. Most of my opponents aren't very impressed with a three. Now a second ace is revealed. Uh, you might have a few to start dropping out and then a third ace. So how the hand plays out very, or depends upon the order. That's a permutation where the order does matter. The number of ways the hand can play out is I have 52 cards I can choose from. This is one of 51, 50 cards, 49, 48. That's the number of different ways that can be dealt five cards. That's Permutations. 52 permutation 5. There's 311 million different ways a given hand can play out. Once I reveal the hand, order long, no longer matters. For example, this, this hand is exactly the same as that hand, exactly the same as this hand. It's four of a kind. When combination or order doesn't matter, that's a combination. That's the same as the number of permutations divided by the number of ways I can organize five cards. 
the ways I can do that is the first first card is I have five cards, choose one. Then I can choose from four, then three, then two, then one. That's five factorial. So if order doesn't matter, that's the permutations, 52 factorial over 52 minus 5 factorial, divided by how many cards? There are 2.5 million different combinations of card hands. Uh, we'll remember that number. We'll be using that later. Let's start with the easiest hand to calculate, a royal flush. Royal flush is 10 through ace of the same suit. There are 2.5 million different hands in poker. Only four royal flushes. I could have a flush, royal flush in spades, diamonds, hearts, or clubs. So the probability of getting royal flush is four possible royal flushes, 2.5 million total hands, or the odds are one in 600,000. What that means is if I played a lot of hands of poker, one out of every 649,000 hands, I should get a royal flush. Next, let's look at the probability of drawing four of a kind. Example up here, I've got four aces. There are several ways to compute this. Uh, this is one of the ways. First, to get four of a kind, the first card could be any hand or any card, ace through king. There's 13 different cards, so that's 13 cards, choose one. The next card is there are four aces in the deck. I'm going to choose all four of them. The last card, there's 48 cards that are not an ace, pick one of them. That gives you 624 different combinations, 624 different hands that make up a four of a kind. The probability of drawing a four of a kind then is just 624 hands that are four of a kind divided by 2.5 million total hands. The odds of getting four of a kind is one in 4,000. Next, let's look at three of a kind. To get a three of a kind, again, the first card, there's 13 cards in the deck, pick one. I don't really care which one or 13 different numbers, ace through king. Uh, then there are four aces in the deck. I'm going to choose three of them. That's four choose three. That's how many different ways I could choose three aces out of four cards in the deck. Uh, the remaining 48 cards, pick two. That's going to give me a slightly biased answer. For example, if I drew two tens, I'd have a full house. That's not three of a kind. I need to subtract out the number of ways of drawing two cards and getting two that match. That's 72. The way that 72 comes up is I've got 12 cards that are not an ace. 12 choose one. Of those four tens, pick two of them. That's six. And six times 12 is 72. That's how many full houses I can have. Subtracting out the full houses gives you 54,000 hands that are three of a kind. Probability of drawing three of a kind is 1 in 47. A flush is all four cards are the same suit. Probability of drawing a flush is the first card is there's four suits, pick one. I don't care which one. Of the 13 hearts in that deck, in the deck, pick five. There's 55,184 different ways of drawing five hearts. This is a little bit biased because it also includes straight flushes. If all these are in a run, that's a straight flush. That's a different hand. There's 40 different straight flushes. Removing those gives 5,144 different flushes. So the probability of drawing a flush is 5144 over 2.5 million, 500 to 1. Next is a straight. There are 40 different straight straights. The first card could be anything between ace and 10. Ace through 5 is a straight. 10 through ace is a straight. So there's 40 different cards I can choose. Once I pick the first card, the second card is there's four twos, pick one, four threes, pick one, four fours, four fives, pick one. That's all the different straights. There's a special case though, there's a straight flush. If they're all the same suit, that's different. That's higher than, than a straight. There's 40 different straight flushes. So subtract those out, there's 10,200 different straights. Give me 254 to one odds against drawing one. To pair is a pair in one of one card, a second pair that doesn't match, and a random card. The probability of drawing a two pair is the first card, we've got 13 different cards, ace through king, pick two of them. Of the two aces, pick two, it's four choose two. Of the two tens, pick two, four choose two. 
Of the remaining 44 cards, pick one. Gives you 123,000 different two pairs, or 20 to 1 odds against drawing a two pair. And the other ones we'll leave as a homework problem. This then are the number of different hands for each type and the odds against drawing each one. That's where combinations, permutations are useful. There is way too many hands to go through every combination, enumerating them. By using combinations, permutations, I can calculate the odds of drawing different hands. I can verify that with a Monte Carlo simulation. What a Monte Carlo simulation does is it writes a program in MATLAB to draw a random hand. I'll then determine what type of hand that was, repeat. Do that a million times, and I can sit there and count how many times out of a million I got a full house, how many times out of a million I got a royal plush, how many times out of a million I got a two pair, and so on. That'll tell you roughly what the, what the probability is. As let the number of hands go to infinity, I'll converge to the actual probability. Now to do that, I first have to shuffle the deck, and MATLAB I can do it like so. Pick 52 random numbers, then sort them. The sorted sequence is 1 through 52, I don't care. How you ordered them is what I do care. The second number in the sort is the first card was the 47th largest number, the second card is the 40th, and so on. This is the value of the cards in order. If I want to determine the value, take the first five cards, that's my hand. The value of the card is the hand mod 13 plus 1, gives me the numbers 1 through 13. So 1 is an ace, 2, 3, 4, 6, so on. The suit is the round down. The hand divided by 13, rounded down, plus 1. So this would be spade, 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 club, spade. There I've got my hand. 9 of spades, 2 of spades, 1 of spades, 4 of clubs, 6 of spades. To determine the number of two pairs, two of a kind, and so on, I count. How many times does the value match? So I'm going to go through the hand and sum up how many times, or how many ones I have, how many twos I have, how many threes, and so on. To determine what kind of hand I have, I'll then sort this. Um, sort goes up ascending. So the last one, end of 13, says if the biggest pair I have is four, I've got four of a kind. If the biggest I have is a three, followed by a two, I've got a full house. If it's a three and less than two, I've got three of a kind. Two and two is a two pair. Two and less than two is a pair. So after playing one million games of poker, I wind up with the 252 out of the million were four of a kind. 14909 out of a million were a full house, three of a kind, two pair, and a pair. That means with the Monte Carlo simulation, take that divided by a million, that's the odds of getting a four of a kind, full house, three of a kind, two pair, and pair. And notice this is close, not exact, but close to the computed odds. Uh, note that that essentially is the definition of probability. If you repeat an event a large number of times, the occurrences should be the probability times the number of events. For example, for a million hands of poker, I should get a three of a kind, one out of every 47.3 times. That's what I got. I got three of a kind, 21,000 out of a million times. So that's combinations and permutations.